with his brothers Groucho, Chico, and Zeppo, Harpo Marx made some of the funniest motion pictures ever. Uh, he actually never said a word on screen and was always seen wearing his blonde wig and was usually also chasing a blonde. My next guest is Harpo's oldest son and is responsible for the re-release of this book right here. It's called Harpo Speaks. Please welcome Bill Marx. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Uh, now, we mentioned in the uh, the little bit of film there that we saw that he never never spoke uh, in film. I, I, I apparently he spoke in the stage act before the films, right? First, he was a character by the name of Patsy Brannigan, which was a, a character created in a school days act that uh, was an old vaudeville act. And he read a review one time that said something like, uh, the Marx brother who did pantomime made a memorable illusion However, it was dashed to the rocks the minute he opened his hmm. mouth to speak. So he became a strict pantomimist. Mm -hmm. This was long before even was Harpo. Yeah, yeah. What, what was his voice like when he actually did talk? It was uh, Upper East Side. He would take a word like turkey and it would come out, Takey, <laughs> hamburger, liver waste. And uh, the, the, he had a very soft, patty yeah. a, a voice with a bomb, yeah. that kind of nice quality. Yeah, <laughs> this is Harpo. <laughs> kind of what, uh, what kind of a father was it? What was it like for you to have, uh, you, you must have been aware of what kind of, how your father made a living. Well, all kids, myself included, were so self-involved. He was just a father. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's basically. Did he help you with your homework and stuff? Oh, God, yes. He was a, a wonderful all pervasive influence on all of us kids. I have two Marx brothers and a Marx sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and uh, he would help us with our homework and he would do uh, one wonderful thing. He thought that to laugh is the greatest thing you can do mm -hmm. and to hear laughter. And I know you love to hear laughter, we all do. And what he would do is he would take a problem or what appeared to be a crisis and reduce it to absurdity. I had a terrible hassle. I was lying awake at night. I was in the fourth grade, and I had to write a poem for my, uh, and it was due the following day. And I'd been brooding about it for three or four days. So finally, he said, I'll help you at the, at the dinner table. And by the end of the salad, he had come up with my poem. And I remember it to this day. There they go, I'm betting on Flo. If she loses, I'll blow my dough. Into the stretch, she's out in front. At the wire, when I done. <laughs> I got a B plus. A B plus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he but, got an A. <laughs> uh, but your your father didn't really have any education at all, did he? He was thrown out of a window one too many times. Uh, actually, it was a second story window in the first grade, so he never went back. Well, now why would he be tossed out windows? Well, because he, he, the bully did it, and he oh. was a little guy, and they beat up on him all the time. But uh, strangely enough, in spite of his lack of formal education he was one of the most sought after and, and revered members of two of the most famous uh, literary roundtables in the world the Hillcrest Country Club and of course the Algonquin uh -huh. Roundtable yeah, yeah. and uh, he was a very very sophisticated man and he was a great audience people loved to 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 be around him because he cared about what people had to say and that's how he got a, a very very good education. All right, we have. Uh, well, you tell us what you have. These, these are from your own these personal collection from movies. when you were a kid. Yeah, he loved to uh, be involved in home movies, and my mother took practically all of these. Okay, and they're fun. So uh, I guess you can just go ahead and talk over them as we take a look at them and uh, tell us where these these are from. Is this like backyard stuff. Uh, this is all over the place. That's backyard. That's. Uh, Little Willie on the right, and that's, uh, he was always trying on <laughs> new wigs, you know. There's Groucho, and uh, in one of his well, Groucho happier looks terrific moments, there, yeah. They? they were all very athletic, and who is that in the background? Oh, there he is. Yeah. They were all very athletic people, as you well know. <laughs> that was, I guess, Groucho's fourth wife. <laughs> this could be dirty. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, he, he really caught that. Yeah. That was up in Vancouver, British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is where you lived as a kid? This, uh... Uh, no, that was, I don't know where that was. But now, this is up in Vermont. Uh -huh. All of them were athletic. This is me on the left. He loved kids. He... 
you can see the man child. Did you have a lot of dogs when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those were just three of them. <laughs> What did he do? Uh, what did he do to amuse himself? What did he do that was fun for him, other than playing with the family and the, and the dogs and the neighbors and stuff? Well, he was an ardent golfer, and he he would play golf. He would play to a 12 to 14 handicap, no matter what. But he would always experiment. He was the first person I ever knew that ever putted all of shooting pool. Mm -hmm. He would uh, also, he was the first person I ever knew that played 18 holes of golf nude. <laughs> now, where did this take place? In, in uh, Palm Springs, when most people <laughs> left during the summer, he was a sun worshiper. And so I went out with him one day on a golf court, and he'd hit a golf ball, and uh, then I, he'd run over and jump in a neighbor's pool that was adjacent uh -huh. to, the, to the fairway, take a dip, jump back in the golf cart, we'd go to the, the ball, and the next day he played 18 holes of golf that way. Absolutely nude. Absolutely. And, and of course the obvious question, where did he keep the tees? That, you know, <laughs> uh, um, it's just a stupid, a stupid, no, no, no. Um, okay, the, uh, I'm sorry. Shall I tell you? <laughs> yeah, no. uh, uh, the book, of course, is uh, Harpo Speaks. Geez, it's a pleasure to meet you and it was great fun looking at those uh, films. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for being here, sir. Thank you very much. We'll uh, take a pause here. We'll be back with Jimmy Cliff.